Hey, I'm Eric Rigg. Uh, I work at GE Digital as a infrastructure engineer for uh, uh, the Predix Inf Infrastructure Engineering Organization. Um, I, uh, we, we build all sorts of uh, really cool uh, industrial internet of things. Um, Predix is like a platform for us to be able to, uh, for, for clients to be able to provide uh, um, data back to uh, a system that will actually uh, provide APM access or, or a, a, uh, application performance monitoring or uh, also metrics, alerting, things like that. So um, I sit way down at the bottom in the infrastructure engineering piece. So uh, we uh, have tons of different secrets and we have lots of different platforms that we actually uh, operate on. So we use uh, Predix, uh, or sorry, we use uh, private cloud, we use Azure, we use AWS, we have multiple regions that we're in. And so with all that, um, we have secrets all over the place, right? So one really cool tool that we use is uh, Vault. Has anyone actually used HashiCorp Vault before? Sweet, there's a lot of you, that's awesome. Uh, so we've uh, just recently kind of gone down the, uh, this journey with Vault, uh, probably within the past six months, but we've been huge uh, HashiCorp uh, uh, users for a long time. So uh, Terraform Enterprise, uh, we've just got that in recently, so we're really stoked about that. Um, but we've used uh, Vagrant, we've used Packer, uh, and uh, Ter Terraform Native. So we've got lots of HashiCorp products uh, that we're using. Um, but Vault has actually been a really super cool uh, tool that we've actually integrated into our systems re recently. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about Vault, and then we're going to do a little demo. So, uh, so Vault itself. Um, is a secrets management solution. So you can store all sorts of different kinds of secrets there. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about SSH specifically. So Vault has, like I said, it has lots of op, uh, solutions that you can actually uh, set up. Um, but, dang, that wind is crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, the SSH uh, backend is what we're going to talk about mostly. So specifically, uh, one-time passwords and uh, certificate authorities. So and then we'll just kind of show you like actually how it works. Uh, I'm going to tempt the demo gods today. So what is Vault? So Vault provides uh, secrets consolidation. You can throw in uh, basically any type of secret that you have available to you. So whether it's database secrets or it's AWS credentials or it's uh, keys, uh, PEMs, things like that. Uh, it can all be thrown into Vault. It's multi-platform, which is why we chose it. So we are sitting on AWS, Azure, uh, on-prem, and uh, we can deploy it to any of those solutions. Um, one of the really cool features also that Vault has is dynamic secrets management. So you can uh, set up your uh, services to actually rotate, auto-rotate those credentials. So secrets that are, uh, say, a database, uh, if you have Postgres database or something, you can actually set up your application to auto-rotate that on a TTL. So really cool feature. Um, policy management is another thing that Vault provides, which is... Uh, accessing those secrets themselves, providing TTLs on those secrets. Very, really, I mean, really cool uh, system that uh, Vault provides. And then with those uh, leases um, on, those, on those secrets, um, you can set up uh, time-based uh, access to those secrets. So some of the key features of Vault, uh, like I mentioned already, secrets management, uh, really, I, I can't tell you how many times I've actually tried to get onto an instance, and I'm looking for the damn key. So where the hell is this key? It's actually sitting in Dave's home directory. What's, why is that key in Dave's home directory, and why can't I get to it right now? It's just ridiculous, right? So Vault provides that sort of consolidation, and everyone, you know, anyone who is authenticated to Vault can actually get those, inst those, those secrets uh, based on the policies that are associated with that. Another service that we haven't really spent a whole lot of time with at GE is uh, encryption as a service. Um, you can send any text or any, anything to, uh, to Vault and it will provide a encryption, encrypted uh, data back to you and you can use that for whatever it is you use it for. Um, now, again, we haven't really explored this too much, so uh, I'm really hoping that we can actually get into this later. And then again, uh, pr privileged access management. So being able to access uh, your secrets based on policies. So if you have a dev team, then the dev team can actually 
uh, access their secrets for their uh, whatever systems they have. If you have an infrastructure team or an operations team, those guys can actually access their secrets that are associated with them. Uh, as an administrator, I get access to all the secrets. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, SSH one-time passwords. Uh, so that's um, a ability to um, send off a request to Vault and get a one-time password back to you and use that, well, one time. So then there's also SSH signed keys. So we can use a Vault as a certificate authority to send your SSH key to, and that uh, Vault will send a signed certificate back that has uh, policies associated with it to be able to access your instances. And we'll kind of go through like how that works. So SSH one-time password. So as a user, I can make a request to Vault and say, hey, uh, I've got uh, a request for a one-time password. And Vault will say, cool, you actually are authenticated. I want a, I'm gonna go ahead and give you back that password. So it sends back that one-time password and the user has that one-time password. It can use it one time. And I send that username and one-time password request to my client. My client is actually set up using a PAM module, a plug pluggable authentication module uh, called a Vault SSH helper. And th it's kind of like an in-between, and it says, hey, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and broker that connection and say, hey, Vault, is this person actually, ac uh, can this person access uh, this instance with this IP address, this username, and this password? And Vault says, yep, cool, you're good. I'm gonna go ahead and send you uh, the SSH connection all the way through. The next piece is certificate authority. So you can use Vault as a way to sign your certificates. Uh, or sign your SSH certificate. So you send it your public key, and it will say, um, sweet, uh, you got your, uh, your public key is, um, is good, we're gonna go ahead and give you a signed key back based on the policies that are associated with that, and we send the signed key back, or s take that signed key, SSH over to the instance. That SSH actually has the certificate authority that was created from Vault and can then basically say, okay, uh, since that certificate authority is already on that instance, it's going to broker that connection, say that's good. It's not actually going to take a, make the request to Vault um, because you've already done that prior to and you've actually pushed that certificate authority to the instance. So it's basically just going to verify the signature of that, the instance itself. Cool, so I don't really wanna do slides. I'm pretty sure you guys are all tired of slides because there's been a lot today. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how it works. Uh, right. Cool. So um, the way that I've got this set up is uh, I'm actually gonna be inst instantiate. Oh yes, yes, sorry. Thank you. How's that? Is that better? We'll go a little bit bigger. How's that? Yeah. That looks good. Sweet. Okay, cool. So, um, oh, no. man, this is the crappy thing about demos, right? Uh, okay, cool. So, uh, you guys can see all that, right? So basically what we've got set up here is I didn't want to rely on the internet here, so we're not actually going to be instantiating any instances out in the cloud or anything. Um, I've got uh, a couple Docker containers I'm going to be instantiating and uh, a, a vagrant, a local vagrant uh, box that I'm going to be instantiating. So um, in order to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and set up the server. Uh, this is just a dev server, so don't ever use the dev server in like real production because uh, it's, not good. Uh, you don't want to have tokens and things like that that are just out in the clear. Uh, I think you know the previous talk talked a little bit about that. So just to show you that I'm not actually smoking anything, uh, there's a vault server running here. So uh, and I have to set up the environment here. Um, all that's doing is setting up couple variables, a vault, the vault address, which is just a local host. And then I actually am giving it this token ID. Typically this token ID would be uh, created during an authentication. So I would authenticate to vault using something like LDAP or GitHub or something like that. Um, but we're gonna cheat a little bit and just create the token and not have to deal with any sort of uh, TTLs on that, on that particular token. 
So we got, we'll go ahead and run vault status. We actually have our vault instances running, which is cool. And then we have to enable the backend. So there's all these different uh, secrets backends. So there's kind of two aspects of vault. There's the authentication to vault itself. And then there's all of the secrets that you can store in the backend. So you can use, uh, there's a variety of different backends. We're gonna just use the SSH backend, but there's also like generic key value backend. There's database backends. There's actually a bunch of AWS backends too that you can use. Um, and they're always kind of uh, growing. So we're gonna go ahead and enable. You get to see my crappy typing. Oh, see? All right, cool. So we've got the uh, SSH backend enabled. Now that we've got that enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring up a Docker client. Um, this Docker client, all it has is, uh, it just got those, uh, that PAM module that I was talking about earlier set up. So the uh, Vault SSH helper is already installed on this instance, and, so, and it's already configured. Now the only piece that we're missing here are all those policies that I was talking about. So I'll go ahead and just kind of show you that I can't actually SSH to this instance. I got it running. Those of you that are familiar with running Docker locally, um, I, all I'm doing is just exporting some ports. So I have to set up the ports uh, to SSH to. So I'm not, I don't know the password. I can try things, but I don't know it because there's no password associated with this right now. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and write the policy in order for us to uh, create a one-time password. Key type. You get to listen to the wind. It's really pretty. Default user. And we're gonna give it a CIDR block. Uh, so what this does here is it says, any, any instance that comes in on this CIDR range can authenticate to this role. So I'm just gonna give it the whole range, but you would wanna give it whatever range, obviously, you have for your system. So in order to get creds, you have to write to the creds uh, endpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and run uh, vault write, SSH, creds, OTP role. That's my role, and then my IP address for my Docker instance. So I guess I kind of missed a piece. There's a, a Docker network also running behind here. So there's two containers. There's the uh, vault instance and then there's the uh, OTP client itself. And so those two are actually connected on a Docker network that uh, we're using this uh, side of range for. So uh, the, uh, the client is actually set up on this, on this 0 0.3 uh, IP address. Oh, did I retype? Oh, I s called it rolls. We'll go ahead and call it rolls. Oh, that's not going to work either. Sorry about that. Okay, cool. So now we got our key, uh, and we're going to go ahead and try and just SSH to our instance which is localhost, like I said earlier, we're running Docker here. And we'll copy that key, and we're in, cool. So that's kind of how one-time password works. Um, it's super nice, now there's some configuration that has to be done on your uh, clients, right? So that, that PAM module needs to be configured. So let's just kind of take a look at what uh, that looks like. Uh, and this would be done, I mean, it could be done in your Docker uh, configuration, your Docker file, like I did. Um, a lot of times, uh, too, you could, um, you could set it up to, with like Chef or Puppet or something like that. So if you look here, uh, this line here, what we're doing here is we're saying anything that comes in go ahead and broker that connection to the Vault SSH helper, and that will then uh, use the config file to say, hey, okay, here's my Vault instance, here's my role that's associated with my instance, am I okay to go ahead and SSH in? I'm good, cool. So then it brokers that connection and it, and it uh, successfully SSHs in. So let's take a look at the Vault CA, or the CA, uh, which is a little bit different. 
Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, we use the same vault instance that we have up and running, the vault server. So we'll write, uh, we're going to create an uh, a, a actual CA signing key. Cool. So there's our key. This is our, uh, the actual key that we would want to put on all of our instances. So again, with uh, Puppet or Chef, uh, we could pop that onto an instance. Um, I'm going to use Vagrant uh, to actually do to bring this up uh, and uh, mount that file to the Vagrant file or to the sub file system. So first, I actually need to write that to uh, a file. So we'll go ahead and just read uh, the public key field. And we're going to write that out to trusted user CA key. So we cat that out, just make sure that we got a good key. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and just bring up that, uh, that client. Now just, oh, of course. Thank you, keys, look at that. Too much typing. <laughs> All right, cool, so now that we got that running, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you uh, um, over here what the what that vagrant file looks like um, and what we're doing on that instance it's really nothing special it's just a standard vagrant box all I'm doing is uh, um, configuring the SSHD config with that new trusted user cert and uh, and then popping the file on there that's it so um, really not a lot of sh you know configuration management work that you would need to do in order to get this CA onto the instance itself and we'll be running here for a minute. Uh, song and dance, and uh, any questions so far? <laughs> yeah, go for it. If vault goes down. That's a good question. So there's a couple different instances. Uh, so we actually, uh, we have it in a highly available uh, setup. So we have it in multiple, multiple regions. Um, we even have it uh, replicated to multi multiple regions. Uh, so we have, uh, um, we have this set up in a way that, that hopefully it will not, right? So it's a service that is, it is, it is required. Now, um, with respect to CA, if this box ever comes up here, uh, the, um, the CA itself won't actually, there's no need for you to actually access uh, Vault when you're SSHing into the instance. The only time that you actually need to uh, access uh, Vault is to sign the key. Once this key is signed, then there is no interaction with Vault itself. So it looks like our instance isn't gonna be coming up here. I don't know why. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if I can clean this up and I wonder if it's my internet connection. At any rate, yeah. So that's that's what that's what we do, right? So um, it's a, it is a service that we expect to keep up. Um, so we've built it in a way that is uh, that is um, highly available. But certainly, yeah. Sure. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like I said, um, we have we actually use Vault Pro. Uh, Vault Pro is set up uh, to be uh, replicated amongst uh, regions. So, if the Vault instance goes down in one region, uh, like U.S. West, then we have it sp uh, spun up. I mean, we already have it replicated in a whole other environment, a whole other region. So, uh, I mean, when you say Vault going down, that would really require like, well, multiple failures, right? So, uh, certainly, like we could have all of AWS go down and we would have problems, right? Uh, so, but Netflix would have problems. You wouldn't be able to watch your movies. 
Uh, <laughs> so yeah, there, there's there's variety of different ways to uh, to set it up to be HA compliant, but uh, but really the way that it's set up uh, today that we have it set up is is as good as we're gonna get. So uh, but yeah, you're right. Like the good thing is that all of the way that all, we also have it set up is that it will. Uh, we have everything replicated to S3, so all of our uh, data that we store um, for with Vault uh, is is replicated into S3 as well. So we kind of have like multiple failure scenarios that would need to happen in order for us to like lose our uh, lose our Vault instance. So I'm sorry, but this isn't going to come up. This is how demos go. Uh, but if you have any other questions, any other questions? Yeah. So do you have any uh, SSH client config magic that just transparently does that vault to get the password so you don't have to get the password from vault and then uh, paste it into the uh, SSH password prompt? Yeah, so there's the PAM configurations that are required in order for you to broker those connections for one-time password. Um, so those PAM configurations that I kind of showed you earlier um, were, uh, were required in order to... I mean on the client side. So you did the, the right to vault to get the one-time password and then paste it into the SSH prompt? Is there any just automation where I just SSH to the box and it just works? Um, like from, from my laptop itself? Is that yeah. Yeah, 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 no, there's nothing special there. So the only, the only piece there is that I actually had to authenticate to vault. So once I've authenticated to vault, um, and, I, and I make my, so what, I authenticate to vault, so I say vault login, which I didn't go through that because it's already. Uh, right, so my question is, can you make SSH do the vault login for me so I don't have to copy I see, paste the I password? See. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the magic, right? Uh, and it, it's not, uh, so um, yeah, w the way we have it set up is we have a uh, LDAP server that's uh, tied to vault. So then uh, in order for me to authenticate to vault, I have LDAP policies associated with Vault, and I go and I say Vault login, and it basically brokers goes o goes off to LDAP and says, "Hey, do I have authentication to actually get into Vault itself?" And then I get a response back and say a token back, and I use that token, that Vault token, then to do any other Vault ad additional Vault commands to then, like you said, uh, grab my one-time password, Vault SSH, blah blah blah. Does that make sense? So I think I can add something to my Vagrant file here. And of course, my, f my colleague here helped me out. <laughs> yeah, see, so it's asking for, for uh, update, which I don't want to update my stuff. Sweet. Look at that. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> right on. Cool, so we went ahead and All right, well, anyway, um, so basically what would happen now is I would be able to SSH into the instant, okay, there we go. Uh, <laughs> so let's just do this. <laughs> Ubuntu at localhost, 
Uh, oh, sorry, I actually have to uh, run a couple of commands here, um, and I'm trying to get my notes back, of course, and my internet died. Uh, so um, I need to go ahead and write out, did the internet die? It just, Yeah, mine's not working. Awesome. I know, right? Seriously. All right, cool, guys. So basically what I would do here is I'd be able to write a role. I can show you that role real quick. Uh, that role looks like this. And effectively what I'm doing is I'm going to be writing that role to Vault and say uh, the default user is Ubuntu and my TTL is, uh, is two minutes. So what I would do then is be able to uh, write to Vault and say, okay, I'm already authenticated. I can write to, to Vault. It would actually give me and send it my public key. I would send it my public key. It would, I would write it back to a cert file. It's in my same uh, .ssh directory and be able to SSH right into my instance. It would actually authenticate with the certificate authority that we wrote to that uh, instance, and I'd be SSH'd in. So Vault is actually super powerful for uh, SSHing uh, around being able to manage your SSH uh, access to instances. Um, we have like tons of, uh, um, we've had issues in the past where we've uh, had to be uh, had to SSH into our instances, and it's been just a, a nightmare trying to find everything. Um, I heard earlier today even that people are storing secrets in Excel files and things like that. So, like this is super cool to be able to just consolidate everything all into one place, be able to SSH into your instances, uh, be able to get uh, keys, uh, access tokens. AWS has a super cool integration to be able to rotate your uh, AWS access keys as well. Um, and I'm really looking forward to anything that, uh, you know, all the integrations with uh, Azure as well. So um, that's everything. I appreciate your time. Uh, any other questions that you might have? Yeah. How, how does, re oh, revocation? Um, yeah, so you can manually re uh, revoke uh, your, so it's all, all token-based. Everything in Vault is, uh, is token-based. So um, when you want to revoke a token, um, which is effectively access to a secret, um, revocation uh, can be set up on a TTL. Um, or it can actually be like um, manually uh, executed. So I could, as an administrator, I could say, hey, I want this person to be revoked um, and they wouldn't have access to, to that particular token or that key or that policy. Any other questions? Yeah. Hello. Hey, thanks for doing a demo. Um, so what's the audibility story like with Vault for SSH? The, the audit, uh, audit ability, is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Vault actually has an audit backend, um, and you can enable that audit backend to then write to uh, uh, syslog. So we actually use that, um, and we then uh, send that off to Splunk, and we can you know, do all sorts of uh, um, basically you know, look into those logs, whatever it might be. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's based on the backend. So as soon as I enable that backend, that SSH backend, I then have, uh, and I enable the audit uh, backend. I, those two tie together to then just s uh, spit logs out. And so then I can start, now of course, like none of the secrets themselves are actually spit out, right, to the log. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. But uh, so um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it's set up so that those are, two those are tied together and, uh, and you can you know, do all your auditing that you need to do. Um, we don't deal with that. We just kind of ship all the logs off, and hopefully the security guys know what they're doing. <laughs> Any other questions? Cool. Sorry for the last, uh, the, yeah, the last. Oh, yeah, cool. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, so um, you mentioned that you're using Terraform with all of yeah. this jazz. And um, so uh, are you using, like, a vault for key value secret store? And, uh, and if so, are you, uh, are you filling that content from Terraform with one of its Providers. Yeah, good question. Um, so we're, we're using Terraform to build up our, the clusters themselves. 
um, and we've explored using the uh, vault provider. It gets a little bit hairy there because as you're like writing secrets uh, using Terraform, that stuff gets stored in state files. So we're kind of like uh, still exploring uh, the, the configuration of vault and what we want to use uh, the Terraform provider for vault and what we, you know, what, what aspects of what resources we want to use and what we don't want to use because there's a lot of capabilities there, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a kind of scary, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, we're uh, like policies themselves, totally. We're just like writing policies and JSON files and spitting those things out, storing it all in uh, config files and, uh, and get projects so that way we can just uh, spin stuff off and, and, and not, not have to worry about that. But, but secrets themselves are, yeah, not, not quite, yeah, we're not there, <laughs> so. Cool, thanks guys, I appreciate it. Thank you.